I have copied the data set in SAS here, that humidity and comfort data, just one replication, uh, both low level of uh, humidity and temperature, zero response, and then high level of temperature, low level of uh, uh, humidity, and then just total four, high, high temperature, low temperature, and humidity. So this is the data that we um, uh, used for the humidity and temperature and then we ran the SAS analysis the RS regression model which produces the uh, response surface so uh, let me run that and then explain and uh, let's see what that does uh, what that means by the um, by this um, response surface model oftentimes when you use p-value and decide if something is significantly high or low or you know something is significant or not but this response surface tells a little bit more so it, it shows you a train and train towards a peak or you know low something like that in this data set we only have two uh, we used if you remember correct um, 75 degree temperature and zero degree temperature only two level however we know that if we increase the temperature again then the comfort level goes down so what i have done i have created another data set like this temperature humidity comfort and also their interaction so i added one more level so i had before zero degree temperature 75 degree and i added 85 degree with that same thing with the humidity i have zero th 35 before now i added another 60 you know that about 30 percent humidity we feel the most comfortable and then as the humidity goes high like 60 percent we don't feel as comfortable also when it's too dry it doesn't come uh, create that comfort either so I'm expecting some carb that will have uh, some kind of peak um, in in some place uh, where I can optimize so if we run this response surface with three levels of temperature three levels of humidity as you can see right here around say temperature around uh, 70-75 degree and then humidity about 35 percent here is the peak and you can see there are quite a good amount of area that people feel comfortable so instead of saying that 75 degrees significantly comfortable or 35% um, humidity is significant comf significantly comfortable, we can actually see a range of area where the temperature and humidity can be set to assume similar comfort, not statistically different. So the idea of response surface, it actually visualizes what's going on instead of just the p-value. So here in this case, just the p-value tells something is significant or not, but you know when we see the response surface we gives, we see a trend of uh, what's going on um, with this variable so predicted value uh, comfort and then humidity and temperature you can see uh, there is a range so that's it about the response surface we are interested to visualize the trend instead of just a p-value whether something is significant or not uh, they did tells us a little bit more about the variable than the anovial analysis. So this is one step added, like one of the post talk that you did before, uh, to key pairwise comparison or Fisher LSD pairwise comparison. Response surface would be another kind of like a post talk type of test. Once you see a variable is significant, then you do some further analysis to see what is the optimum point to find out to optimize that uh, variables we use response surface.